Good evening. Welcome to our 40 days of prayer and fasting. And as you know, this whole week is about blessing our nation. So on Tuesday, we talked about blessing. We bless our nation with our words. Amen. And our character as well. We also bless the nation with our prayer altar. So I'm going to encourage you. This is just a reminder as well for those of you who have started to build a prayer life. Don't stop now. After the 40 days, make sure that your prayer altars are regular and and active. All right, active. It doesn't matter if it's half an hour, one hour. It doesn't matter. Make sure it's regular and active. Pray for build your prayer altars for your families in your workplace, and do not forget to come to the regular prayer altars that's going to be happening in church. All right, that's how we bless our nation. Secondly, we bless our nation by praying for our governments. Praying for God's appointed times and seasons for the nation of Malaysia. God will show you that Malaysia is a rainbow nation. We must learn to pray Malaysia into her calling, into her destiny. God has great plans for Malaysia. Great plans. All right. So don't give up on praying for Malaysia. You don't. You give up, but God hasn't given up. So don't give up. Thirdly, how do you bless the nation of Malaysia? Bless the churches. Pray for the churches. Pray for the bless the churches will be strong. They will not be easily compromised and deceived by the devil. They will have a love for God. They will maintain their first love, and they will never live in fear. All right. Now today I'm going to end this series of blessing our nation with Psalm 24. Psalm 24 is really about blessing the land, its resources, and the people that live in Malaysia. So turn with me to Psalm 24, and I know you all know it well. So if you want, you can stand up and proclaim this psalm. It's a powerful psalm. Psalm 24. All right, yeah, join me. Join me to proclaim this psalm. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for He founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will see blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek Your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates; be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates; lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is he? This King of Glory, the Lord Almighty. He is the King of Glory. Amen. This is a very very good psalm to use when we are praying for our nation, and we are going to pray for every state, the land, and its people. Because the earth is the Lord's, which means Malaysia is the Lord's, Selangor is the Lord's, Sabah is the Lord's, Sarawak is the Lord's, Johor is the Lord's, Penang is the Lord's, Negeri Sembilan, Perlis, Terengganu, uh, where have I forgot? Perak, yeah, Malacca. All this land is the Lord's, and not only is the land. The land means the land and its resources. In other words, the oil of Malaysia actually belongs to the Lord. The timber of Malaysia, the forests of Malaysia, the wildlife of Malaysia, the fact that the land can grow paddy, can grow durians, it is the Lord's. The the many mineral resources I just heard, gold is found in Sabah and in Pahang. It belongs to the Lord, and that is why when we pray for the land, we are praying for these resources to now be taken up to belong to the Lord, and everything because the. Earth is the Lord's, which is the the earth, the land, and everything in it. Everything is everything, including the rivers. I remembered when I was in Sarawak, and the Lord made me pray for the Rajang River. Because the Lord says this river belongs to me. Pray that it will not be polluted. Pray that the Wang Puliao, this this rare fish only found in Sarawak, which is found in upstream in the rivers of Sarawak, will never die because God is the one that put this amazing fish called Wang Puliao in the upstream of the rivers of Sarawak. That's how powerful it is. You know, you need to pray into the rivers of Malaysia that it will be clean, it will not be polluted, it will be the means of livelihood for the people who live down downstream. And the Lord even taught me how to pray for the Jungles of Borneo, because the jungles of Borneo are important for climate change. It is important. In fact, the, the climate change, mat- the haze, matters to God. So pray 
that indeed, that the forests of Borneo, there'll be recultivation, reforestation going on, so that the jungles of Malaysia, which is a rainforest, will not be destroyed. Amen? So that's how you begin to pray into a land and its resources. Then we need to pray for the people in the land. Now, before we pray, what qualifies us to pray? Not everyone can pray into the land and it is heard by God, all right? So who are the people? We go back to an understanding which we started at the beginning of the week. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, verse 3? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he is the one that will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, his Saviour. So, why is it that when we bless the land of Malaysia, when we pray this into the land and its resources, God will begin to hear from heaven because the prayers of the upright exalts a city. Remember, the prayers of the righteous is powerful and effective. That's why the people whom God is listening to are those whom God has trained to walk in uprightness of hearts. The blessings of the upright, the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. And God is the one. See, such is the one who receives a blessing from the Lord and vindication from God our Saviour. You know, I find this very powerful because even as you have done your 40 days, I want us to continue. In fact, after the 40 days, regularly begin to, first of all, come before God, allow a season of repentance, allow God to really deal with us first, and then lift up your hands. Remember, the prayer altar opens the gates of heaven. That's why after lift cleansing, we lift up the seven. Lift up your heads, O you gates, that the, and say and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of Glory comes in. So what do we do? First of all, we come before God. We thank the Lord that through the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven and we have been cleansed by His precious blood. Then we lift up our hands. We build this altar and we begin to say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your heads. Lift up, O gate of Malaysia. Lift up, O gate of Malaysia. Open the doors because the King of Glory is coming into this land. The King of Glory is coming into Malaysia. The King of Glory is coming into Sabah. The King of Glory is coming into Sarawak. The King of Glory is coming into... Shout your state, shout your state, okay? The King of Glory is coming into Selangor. The King of Glory is coming into... Para. I was born in Para. The King of Glory is coming to Penang. The King of Glory is coming to Johor. The King of Glory is coming to Pahang, Tonggano, Kelantan, Negeri Sembilan, Malacca. And you can even bless the people. Lord, I'm blessed. You know, that last year, during the NECF 40 days of prayer and fasting, I was so led to pray for Keda this way. I tell you what happened because the land of Kedah is famous for paddy. It has a soil. You see, God blesses different states with different specialness. <laughs> Can't think of an English word. S different qualities. Yeah, different qualities. And Kedah has a quality that it can grow paddy. So you know what? I began to bless the land of Kedah. I said, Lord, I bless Kedah. May Kedah once more become the rice bowl of Malaysia. May its paddy crops yield fruit a hundredfold. May its rice blossom and grow, Lord. May no one go back and build just condominiums in Kedah. No, because the destiny of Kedah is to be the rice bowl of Malaysia. It's very exciting to pray for land because God will show you what is so special about each land. Sometimes it's about the land and its climate and its resources. Sometimes it's about the people that God has put. And it's always a link. It's always a link. Trungganu and all these places are well known for fish, fishermen. Hey, pray for these fishermen to rise again and not lose the calling of God upon their lives. There's so much we can pray. We can pray for cities. We can pray for land. We can pray for resources. Pray for Sabah. What is God doing in Sabah? What is God doing in Sarawak? God, what is His history all about? And as we research the history, hey, 
God's going to teach us how to pray for the land. And as we pray for these lands, remember, your prayer altar is a gateway. And when you lift up your hands in prayer, when you and I come together to pray over that state or that city, the gates of heaven is open and God will teach us how to pray this blessing back into that land. And when God blesses that land, that land will be blessed. So the rest of tonight, we're going to join Pastor Lindy to pray for different states in Malaysia. You know, the NECF 40 Days of Prayer and Fasting this year has great understanding of how to pray for the different departments. And last year's one had a great understanding on how to pray for different states. So every year they come up with fantastic ways we can learn how to pray for Malaysia. So I want to remind you, after 40 days, what must you do? Build your prayer altars. Lift up your hands. Open the gates of heaven. Let the King of glory come in. And then God will bless our land. Come, join me, in, join me in prayer. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord. Truly, this is the appointed time for Malaysia. This is the appointed season when God is coming into the land of Malaysia to lift up the land of Malaysia. Yes, Lord, we speak to Malaysia. Do not droop your head in shame. Do not droop your head in shame. For the Lord your God has come to lift your head up. And so, Lord, I speak into the nation of Malaysia. Your destiny is about to come. No man can cause you to lose your dignity. For God, our God, has lifted up your head. So I speak to every state in Malaysia. Lift up your head, O Sabah. Lift up your head, O Sarawak. For God has decreed you to be a, a state that can bring in the King of Glory. Lift up your head, O Pahang. Lift up your head, O Trunganu. Lift up your head, O Kelantan. Lift up your head, O Johor. Lift up your head, O Malacca. Lift up your head, O Selangor. Lift up your head, O Perak. Lift up your head, O Kedah. Lift up your head, O Penang. Lift up your head, Perlis. Though you may see your smallest state, yet I see you rise up with glory because the King of Glory is going to bring a blessing and redeem the people and the land. Yes, the evil one may have crushed some of these states, but today we are going to speak that all these states will rise up to their full potential in God's plans. In Jesus' name we proclaim, Amen. What a glorious God we have. I almost can feel that God will give us prophetic utterances over every one of the states. Now, I'm going to tell you this. No way in one hour tonight we can pray all this. So, guess what? The next few months, the rest of this year, every day, go in, possess the land of Malaysia and its destiny by proclaiming what God wants to bless the land about. Amen? God bless you. See you.